Okay, so it was the summer of 2021, and I decided to take a hiking trip to Yosemite National Park. Now, I've been on plenty of hikes in national parks before, but this was my first time at Yosemite, and I was psyched up to explore the iconic national park. So there I was, on the first day, kitted up in my hiking gear and standing at the foot of Half Dome, looking up at the grandeur. And let me tell you, nothing, absolutely nothing, prepares you for the sheer scale of that granite rock face. It's like staring up at a giant monolith touching the skies. I started off on the Mist Trail, one of the most popular trails in the park. It's not an easy trail, mind you. It's about 14 miles round trip, but the views of Vernal and Nevada Falls are totally worth the sweat. Now, as I was hiking, I couldn't shake off this peculiar feeling. You know, that feeling when you sense that somebody's eyes are on you, but when you turn around, there's nobody there. It wasn't anything too unsettling, just a mild prickle at the back of my neck. I thought it was just the excitement of the new trail and the anticipation of the journey ahead. After about three miles in, the trail gets pretty steep. And here's where the story gets interesting. So I was climbing up this steep trail, and all of a sudden I spotted this tiny movement out of the corner of my eye. I turned, trying to get a better look, but all I saw was a flash of brown disappearing into the undergrowth. Now, being in Yosemite, I knew that it could be any host of things. A deer, a bobcat. But there was something odd about that fleeting glimpse. Something I couldn't quite put my finger on. So with my heart pounding a bit, I decided to press on. Because that's what you do when you're hiking, right? You keep moving. I convinced myself it was probably just a deer, but that feeling, that strange feeling of being watched, didn't go away. Now, as I was moving closer to Vernal Fall, the trail became narrower and the surroundings quieter. It was almost serene except for the steady noise of the waterfall breaking the silence. And then, out of nowhere, I heard this weird rustling sound from behind me. I swear my heart almost leapt out of my chest. I turned around, slowly, half expecting to see a bear standing there. And to my surprise, I saw nothing. Just the usual undergrowth, a few trees, and the trail that I had been walking on. The rustling sound had stopped. I must admit it spooked me a bit, but then again I was in the heart of Yosemite, surrounded by nature and its inhabitants. It's not entirely unusual to hear strange sounds or feel a bit on edge. So I just shook off the eerie feeling and I continued. But that's when things took a really weird turn. As I got closer to the falls, I saw this thing. I'm not exactly sure what it was. It was standing near the water, almost blending in with the rocks. I squinted, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. As my eyes focused, I realized it was not a rock. It wasn't an animal. It was, well, a figure. And it was standing upright like a human, but it looked all wrong. It was about my height, maybe a bit taller but its limbs were elongated and kind of distorted. Its skin was grayish brown, almost like tree bark, and it was uncannily thin, like it hadn't eaten in weeks. The body was angular, with joints sticking out in weird places, like its anatomy didn't follow the laws of nature or something. But the face, the face was the most disturbing part. It was flat with these two dark holes for eyes, No nose, no mouth, just these deep black pits. And it was just standing there, staring at me with those hollow eyes. Now I've been around the block a few times and I've seen my share of oddities. But this was different. This was bone-chillingly strange. The air around me suddenly grew cold and I felt this wave of unease wash over me. I stood there, rooted in the spot, caught between curiosity and fear. We must have stayed like that in a silent standoff for what felt like an eternity. The figure never moved. It just stood there at the edge of the falls, blending with the shadows. But then slowly, very slowly, it started to move. Not towards me, but towards the water. It moved in this strange, sort of disjointed manner, like it wasn't used to moving in its own body. 
and with each step it took, I could hear this faint, gravelly sound, like the rustling of dry leaves. And then just as it was about to reach the water, it stopped. And I kid you not, it turned its head and looked back at me, with the dark, empty eyes looking into mine. I felt this cold shiver run down my spine again. And in that moment, it was like time had stopped. It was just me and this bizarre creature locked in this silent confrontation in the heart of Yosemite. And then as quickly as the thing appeared, it leapt into the water. I was left standing there in complete and utter shock. My heart was racing, my palms were sweating. I was struggling to make sense of what had just happened. I looked around, half expecting it to pop back out of the water, but there was nothing. Only the rush of the waterfall and the chirping of the birds like it had never been there in the first place. Strange. I never saw that creature again for the rest of my hike. I don't know what it was or where it came from, but that encounter left a deep impression on me. It reminded me that nature is full of mysteries, some beautiful, some terrifying, and some that defy all explanation. Hi, Lilith. I think my affinity for these stories began when I saw my first cryptid back in 1973. I was only 11 years old, but that day has stuck with me for my entire life. The image of the creature was burned into my mind, and I became mildly obsessed with trying to see it again. Well, now it's nearly 50 years later, and yesterday, I came into contact with this beast once again. I was born and raised in Albany, New York, and I've always been curious about nature and animals. I spent a great deal of time exploring the Albany Pine Bush Preserve. We're situated right between the Catskills and the Adirondacks, and there are tons of trails throughout the area. I'm going to start with my first interaction with the creature way back when, and then tell you all about what went down yesterday. It was the 1970s, so things were a bit more wild and free. I would spend most of my days running around with friends and my brother in the city and the surrounding suburbs, buying candy and playing pranks on the store owners. Some summers we would stay over at my aunt's house, which was just down the road from Pine Bush. The summers were amazingly fun and we felt like we had a whole preserve to ourselves. After what we encountered, I knew that wasn't true. The most interesting part of the preserve are the sand dunes. And now we are right smack dab in the middle of upstate New York. You don't expect the soil to look like a beach. The barren sands are often going up in smoke since they're so dry and desolate. But there's a great deal of critters living in these woods, even on the dunes. So I went out exploring one day by myself because my brother was at horse camp or something. I was walking through the sandy terrain when I saw a dog on the top of a dune. I tried calling over to it, thinking it had gotten lost or away from its owner. It didn't move when I called, so I started towards it. From a distance, it looked like any old dog, maybe a greyhound or a rottweiler, or a massive chihuahua. It was skinny, and I could see the shadows of its ribcage sticking out from under its skin. It was blackish-brown with tall legs and a long snout. And as I walked towards it, it began to growl at me. I started to see it clearer now, and it had a scaly reptilian skin, and it was definitely not a dog. I was a scared little kid at the time, so I backed away slowly. Well, actually, I think any sane person would have done the same. And then the thing started to move towards me, and it moved low to the ground, and it stuck out this long pink tongue. I turned to run. I never looked back. I don't think it ended up chasing me, and I never saw it again. And like I said, this day stuck in my mind for the rest of my life. I told my friends and my family about what I'd seen. Nobody believed me. They thought I was making the story up for attention. I never went walking in the woods after that, but for the rest of my life, I stayed curious. And all those years, it wasn't until just yesterday that I saw it again. I was driving past the preserve on my way to make some deliveries. I work as a postman these days, and I take a few routes that take me out into the more desolate parts of the county. I was going about 65 when I spotted it, but I slowed down right away. There was a dead deer carcass on the side of the road. 
It had been there for at least a day. I'd seen it as I passed by the day before. It was bloated and very clearly a buck, decently sized with a pair of half-grown antlers. The creature that I saw was ripping at it, and it was barely recognizable as a deer at this point. It sunk its teeth in, and it used its long tongue to lap at the coagulated blood. It was disgusting. I looked at it in my rearview mirror, and I just could not believe it. I started to put my truck into reverse so I could get a closer look. I pulled back slowly, but the thing did not pay any attention that I was getting closer. My windows were open, the smell of rotting flesh and sewage wafted into the truck. I tried to hold my breath, but it was just a horrible smell that started to make my eyes water. It was so bad. I closed them for a moment to try to push out the tears, and when I opened them again, the creature was approaching my car. I sat there for a moment and I stared at it. It walked right towards my truck's door and sat just about six feet away. Now I got a really good look at the thing and I didn't even have a chance to notice the smell because my heart was racing so fast. This thing was hideous and drooling. Its entire face and neck and chest were covered in the blood and guts of the deer. Its ears flicked back and forth and its back arched like it was going to pounce. Once I saw that, I knew I had to get out of there. I stepped on the gas and it started actually chasing after me. I thought maybe I could lead it into town or towards the ranger station so someone could get a photo or shoot it. I kept starting and stopping, going at about 30 miles an hour and the thing was keeping right up with me. Eventually another car started to come towards me and I flashed my brights to signal them. Once the thing heard the engine of that car, it ducked back into the brush. And it was gone, and I don't think that car even got a look at it. Probably didn't even know what was going on. I hope maybe they did, though, so at least someone else will know what I'm talking about. My family is pissed that I'm back at it again with this thing, but I hope you guys will appreciate the story. Let me know what you think. Hi, Lilith. I need to tell you something that happened to me last year. I was sitting on my porch at my house in Washington State late at night when I heard a high-pitched whirring noise, and then I saw something quite strange. It was a vibrant blue light that appeared to be spinning, and it slowly went higher up into the sky and gradually spun faster and faster, eventually disappeared behind a cloud, and the whirring noise stopped. Fascinated, I continued looking, waiting for the light to come back, but it didn't. And then suddenly I heard a huge explosive boom, and the cloud lit up this bright green color. It was so bright it was blinding. The blue light was spinning so fast it looked like a bright star shooting across the sky. The green light that followed was just as spectacular. It lit up the entire cloud in this brilliant hue, and it created this incredible spectacle. I stood there amazed at the sight, completely mesmerized. I couldn't take my eyes off of it. Afterwards, I saw green lights falling from behind the clouds towards the ground. And I remember thinking that somebody has to be playing a prank on me. But it was far too epic to be any kind of a simple prank. I remember being concerned if some of the green debris would fall on somebody's house or cause a fire. But there was really nothing I could do. I was in awe and I couldn't stop gazing and wondering if I was even dreaming. I thought that was going to be the most eventful part of the night, but I was wrong. Something quite disturbing happened afterwards. A strange looking black van drove slowly into the field in front of my house. The windows were all blacked out and it drove very slowly. Now I don't get many visitors in this area, nobody really lives around me. So I got very weirded out by the van. It disturbed me enough that I went into the house, locked the door, and looked out the window. The van sat in the field for about ten minutes. Finally, I decided maybe I was being paranoid and just fixed myself some tea. But while drinking it, I kept trying to come up with a logical explanation for what I had seen in the sky. But for the life of me, I couldn't explain it. It had to be extraterrestrial. Either that, or it had been some strange, experimental government aircraft... But why the green explosion? I looked out the window again about 30 minutes later and the van was still sitting in the field. 
I called my husband, who works as a truck driver and was in a different state at the time, and I asked him what I should do. He told me it was probably nothing but to keep watching and call him if anything did happen. I hung up and tried to laugh it off, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I went back outside and sat down on the porch. My mind was racing with the possibilities of who was in the van. I eventually told myself it was just some teenagers doing, well, teenage things in the field and laughed it off. The van suddenly then began to move. I told myself that the teenagers had finished whatever they had come to do and a sense of relief came over me. Then it drove very slowly in the direction of my house and then stopped right in front. Now my heart started pounding as I was wondering what was going on. And suddenly all the doors of the van opened and four men dressed in black suits with sunglasses jumped out. I was terrified and didn't know what to do. They were all holding guns and they started running at me. As they came closer, I could see that their faces were covered with masks. I tried to run into the house, but one of them grabbed me and dragged me back outside. They took me to the van and forced me inside. The last thing I saw before they shut the door was four more men getting out of the back of the van with rifles. And then the van drove away, leaving me alone with these masked strangers. I remember waking up after that, confused and disoriented with a pounding headache. I felt the grass on my hands and I started to look around. Once the blurriness left my eyes, I realized I was in my front yard. I immediately ran inside and called my husband screaming and crying. He told me to calm down and that he couldn't understand me. After taking some deep breaths and forcing myself to calm down, I was able to tell him what happened while holding back tears. I told him I thought it had something to do with the strange lights that I had seen in the sky. What are you talking about? He asked me. The blue light and the green explosion that I told you about earlier, I screamed. But there was a pause. What light are you talking about? He told me I must be in shock from the trauma and I needed to call 911. He had no recollection of me calling him earlier that night. So this experience has caused me a lot of suffering and confusion. My husband tries to be here for me, but he doesn't really understand. I think about that experience daily. And when I tell people, not many of them believe me. In fact, it has cost me a lot, including some friends and family, my career, my credibility, basically everything. I hope that I can soon heal from this experience and get some closure. I really need to move on with my life and pull everything back together. Anyway, I love your show, Lilith, and thank you for inspiring me to reach out about this experience. Thank you again. I have this wild story to tell you. I was out in the middle of Illinois in a smaller little town called Crestwood. It's the kind of place where time seems to move a bit slower and everyone knows each other. But first, let me set the stage and give you a little backstory. I have always been fascinated by abandoned places and the stories that they hold. It's like stepping into a forgotten world and trying to piece together what once was. So when I heard about this old factory on the outskirts of Crestwood, I just couldn't resist. Rumor had it that this place was holding some kind of a secret, something strange and mysterious. And let me tell you, my curiosity got the better of me. Now the factory itself was a massive crumbling structure covered in vines and graffiti. It stood there like a relic from a bygone era reminding you of the town's past. As I approached the entrance, I couldn't help but feel a mix of excitement and apprehension. I mean, who knew what I was about to discover? But this was the part of this that I loved, the anticipation of the unknown. I stepped inside and it was like stepping into another world. The air was thick with dust and the smell of decay. Sunlight filtered through the broken windows, casting eerie shadows on the decaying machinery. It was like a place frozen in time, abandoned and forgotten by the world outside. I loved it. As I ventured deeper into the factory, I stumbled on a room that seemed different from the rest. It was smaller, almost hidden away. And there, in the center of the room, was a table covered in papers and strange, unidentifiable objects. 
It was like somebody had left in a hurry, leaving behind secrets from long ago. Curiosity overwhelmed me, and I started to sift through the papers. There were sketches and diagrams, all detailing something that I couldn't quite understand. But what caught my eye were these tiny seeds, thousands of them in a jar. They were unlike anything I had ever seen before. Smaller, black, like the size of an acorn. And something about them was mesmerizing. I couldn't help but pocket a few of the seeds, thinking that they might be interesting all on their own. But as soon as I did, I felt a chill run down my spine, like my body was telling me that I had just made a big mistake. Suddenly I heard a noise, and it was this low, clicking sound. I turned around, and that's when I saw it. A creature unlike anything that should even exist. It was tall, and its body was covered in this thick, black, oozing substance. Almost like a creature come back from the dead. Its eyes glowed with an otherworldly light, and its limbs were long and sinewy. I froze, unable to move or even breathe. The creature moved towards me with its movements both graceful and predatory. I could feel its gaze piercing through me as if it was searching for something deep in my soul, and not in a good way. And then without warning, it lunged at me. As it did, time seemed to slow down. Its movements were fluid and precise, like a predator closing in on its prey. Its long, razor-sharp claws extended, ready to strike, and its teeth, sharp as daggers, were bared in this menacing snarl. I could feel its hot breath on my face, carrying a putrid stench that made my stomach churn. I snapped out of my shocked state, and my instinct kicked in. Adrenaline surged as I dove to the side, narrowly avoiding the thing crashing into me. And instead, it crashed into the table, sending papers and objects flying in all directions. The room shook with the impact as if the very foundations of the factory had been affected. I scrambled to my feet, heart pounding in my chest, and quickly assessed my surroundings. There had to be a way out of this nightmare. My eyes darted around, searching for an escape route, but the room seemed to have transformed and I didn't recognize anything. Shadows danced and twisted as if the walls were alive. The creature, recovering from its failed strike on me, let out this bone-chilling growl and its eyes glowed fixed on me, filled with this primal hunger. I knew I couldn't outrun this thing. This was its space. So I had to find a way to defend myself and find something, anything that could help me survive. Desperation fueled my actions, and I scanned the room for a weapon, my gaze landing on a broken pipe laying amidst the wreckage of the desk. It was a slim chance, but it was all I had. I grabbed it, and I prepared to face the creature head-on. As the creature advanced again, a flicker of determination replaced my fear. I stood my ground, holding the pipe tightly in my hands. The air crackled with tension, my heartbeat pounding in my ears. I could see the creature's muscles tense, ready to pounce once more. But just as it launched itself towards me, a sudden explosion shook the room from the floors above. I couldn't fathom what it could be but also I couldn't focus on it if I wanted to get out of there alive. The sound made the creature flinch. Seizing that opportunity, I swung the pipe with all my might aiming for its head. The sound of the impact echoed through the chamber as the pipe connected, but it was like hitting a solid wall. The creature staggered for a moment, disoriented, before swiftly retaliating with a swipe of its claws. Pain seared through my arm as its claws reached me, leaving deep gashes. I gritted my teeth, refusing to let it overwhelm me. Blood was dripping. I knew that. But I also knew I had to keep fighting and keep pushing forward. With a surge of determination, I mustered every ounce of strength and I delivered another blow, this time aiming for the creature's midsection. The pipe struck true, and a guttural roar erupted from the creature's throat. It staggered backward momentarily weakened. But our battle was far from over. The creature's eyes burned with a fiery intensity as it regained its composure. It then circled me, wary and calculating. I knew it was ready to strike again. I too readied myself for the next round, knowing that only one of us would emerge from this life and death struggle. 
Just as the creature lunged for its next attack, a shaft of intense sunlight beamed down through a hole in the ceiling. I could see that the creature's skin began to smoke and sizzle, and a horrible screech escaped its lips. It recoiled and shielded its eyes and growled in pain. It was weak to the sunlight. Having found the creature's vulnerability, I knew I had a chance. As the creature retreated further into the shadows, I sprinted towards the beam of sunlight, positioning myself directly under it. Now I was in a much more advantageous position, and the creature would have to pass through the sunlight to get to me. It wouldn't happen. So now with this ability to see and assess the room and stand there safely, I was able to see an exit. And now with the creature disabled by the light, I made my move. I ran for the door and out the building and into more sunlight. I knew I had just escaped a near-death experience. And yet my adrenaline was pumping, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of exhilaration. I had just faced a creature of the unknown, a relic hidden within the abandoned factory, and I had come out alive. I headed back into the town of Crestwood, which seemed to just carry on with its slow-paced life, oblivious of the adrenaline-filled adventure that had just transpired in the factory. I continued on with my life. I returned back home. To tell you the truth, I'm still at it. I'm still searching these abandoned locations, hoping to find something. But the truth doesn't escape me, that I narrowly escaped with my life that day. I share this to let you know that these things are out there, and just be careful where you go, unless you really know what's about to happen. Green Mountain National Forest, Vermont, 2013. I have always had a deep appreciation for nature and the great outdoors. Hiking through the dense, untamed wilderness has become a passion of mine. There's something incredibly peaceful about being surrounded by towering trees the scent of damp earth filling the air, and the symphony of wildlife echoing through the forest. This particular weekend, I decided to embark on a solo hiking trip to the remote Green Mountain National Forest in Vermont. The moment I stepped foot into the forest, a sense of tranquility washed over me. I breathed in the solitude and the opportunity to disconnect from the chaos of daily life. As I ventured deeper into the woods, a sense of excitement and anticipation bubbled within me. I followed a narrow trail, the sunlight barely penetrating the canopy overhead. The further I went, the denser the foliage became, obscuring the path ahead. But I moved on. I had come prepared for this adventure. After a while, I noticed something peculiar amidst the undergrowth. A set of massive footprints imprinted on the forest floor. My heart quickened as I realized the enormity of these prints. Each print was at least three times the size of a regular human's foot. The realization sent a shiver down my spine, but my curiosity got the better of me. I couldn't resist the urge to follow these mysterious tracks. Cautiously, I followed the footprints deeper into the forest with my eyes scanning the surroundings for any sign of movement. The atmosphere grew increasingly eerie, and an unsettling smell hung in the air. A combination of wet dog, garbage, and something else I couldn't quite place. The forest seemed to hold its breath as if it was aware of an unseen presence lurking within its depths. The rustling of leaves and distant snapping branches intensified my anticipation, and it heightened my senses. My heart pounded in my chest as I forged ahead, determined to find the source of the mystery. Little did I know that I was about to experience a series of chilling encounters, encounters that would forever alter my perception of the natural world. Suddenly a sharp crack echoed through the forest followed by a sound that sent a chill down my spine. The sounds reverberated in a way that was not a normal sound for a forest. My heart raced, and I instinctively froze, straining my ears to catch any further sound. And then a growl, deep and menacing, reverberated through the trees. It was unmistakably non-human, 
primal warning that seared deep inside me. The tension in the air escalated as I continued, now acutely aware that I was not alone. The snapping of branches and rustling of leaves seemed to taunt me, always staying just out of sight. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, of eyes peering at me from the shadows. The forest, seemingly serene just moments before, had now transformed into a sinister cluster of trees that made no sense to me. I knew I was going to lose daylight soon. It would cast long shadows in the trees. So I quickened my pace, my heart pounding in my chest, and suddenly a piercing yelp shattered the silence, piercing through the forest like a warning siren. It was followed by a cacophony of otherworldly whooping noises that echoed through the night. Panic surged within me as I realized I had unwittingly stumbled into the domain of something far more formidable than I could have imagined. Pushing forward, I followed the trail of broken branches and disturbed foliage, evidence of a powerful creature recently passing through, my eyes revealing glimpses of twisted and gnarled trees surrounding me. And then, as if the forest itself was guiding me, I stumbled upon a hidden opening, a cave nestled within a cluster of moss-covered rocks. I could feel a strange energy emanating from its depths, almost beckoning me to come closer. I hesitated, my mind still raging between curiosity and caution, but I steadied my breath, and I cautiously entered the mouth of the cave. Inside, the air was thick with an earthy musk and an inexplicable sense of ancient power. My flashlight danced across the cave walls, revealing remnants of a makeshift lair with twigs and leaves scattered on the ground. Remnants of fires, an unmistakable stench of wet fur. It was a sanctuary fit for a creature of immense strength. As I ventured into the cave, my heart thudded against my ribcage. I couldn't slow it down no matter how hard I tried. Shadows danced on the walls in a way that clearly told me I was out of my element in here. My footsteps echoed through the cavern. And then as if under the control of some other force, my flashlight flickered off, plunging me into complete darkness. Panic seized my chest and I fumbled in my bag for a lighter even though I knew I never carried one. But I was desperate for even the smallest flicker of light and then the deafening silence shattered. A thunderous growl echoed on every wall of the cave, sending vibrations through my bones. The ground even shook beneath my feet as this massive figure materialized from the shadows. Towering at least ten feet tall, its body was a testament to raw power and untamed wilderness. Covered in coarse, matted hair, it possessed a primal type of aura, that somehow demanded my respect and attention. The creature's beady eyes met mine, and for a fleeting moment, time stood still. I watched as its lips curled into a snarl, revealing glistening teeth, and with that, an air of danger permeated the cave. Luckily, in that moment, my survival instincts kicked in, and I could feel my body slowly backing away, matching its intense gaze. With each cautious step, I could feel the creature's scrutiny, its unwavering stare at my every movement. And then, with one final yelp, the beast retreated into the shadows, disappearing into the darkness from where it came. I exhaled a shaky breath, grateful for the opportunity to leave with my life intact. As I stumbled back into the forest, the weight of the encounter pressed on me, harder with each exiting step. The enigma of the creature I saw remains with me to this day, forever etched in my memory in a way that I cannot seem to get away from. I beg of you to please take this as a warning, a testament to the truth that mysteries do lay hidden within the depths of our natural world. This crazy encounter happened a few years ago when I was on a road trip with some friends to a town called Point Pleasant in West Virginia. Now let me tell you, Point Pleasant is known for its history and its share of spooky legends. But never did we expect that we would encounter what we did that day. 
We arrived in Point Pleasant on Friday evening in the fall, planning to spend a few nights in the area. Our first plan was to explore the infamous TNT area, the former World War II munition site that was said to be haunted. We wanted to hit that up first, and in the dark, to make it even more intense. So the sun was setting as we drove down the barren road leading to the destination. It was surrounded by dense woods on both sides. I remember, in retrospect, that the air had a certain eerie quality to it. As we parked our car and stepped out to look around, the silence was more than noticeable. We were armed with flashlights and also a touch of nervousness, if I was to be honest. From where we parked, we wandered along the paths towards the site, with our lights shining through the darkness. When we arrived, we simultaneously looked up at the crumbling concrete structures, looking as these old bunkers loomed over us. Suddenly, amidst the stillness, we heard a distinct rustling sound coming from the underbrush nearby. We looked around nervously, and then the noise grew louder, and within less than a minute, out of the darkness emerged a creature that defied explanation. And yet at the same time, we all knew what we were looking at. It was the Mothman, the legendary being that is said to haunt the town. The creature stood before us, its presence commanding, mysterious, Its body was tall and slender, almost resembling a human figure, but with a very uncanny degree of the supernatural. Its skin, a dark shade, appeared to be like leathery armor, stretched tightly across the frame. And the eyes, they were the most chilling feature, glowing orbs of crimson piercing through the night. We all stood and watched in awe as the Mothman's wings unfurled from its back, spanning an incredible width that seemed to defy the laws of nature. Incredibly, its wingspan alone was enough to cast a shadow over us, blocking out the faint glow of the moon. The creature emitted an otherworldly screech, a sound that echoed through the night. It was a haunting cry, undoubtedly a sound from a world that we would never comprehend. And yet despite its display of power, It didn't attack us. Instead, it fixed its gaze on us with an intensity that made it feel that something could happen. It was as if the Mothman had a message, a warning that it desperately wanted to convey. We were captivated, caught in a moment wondering what it wanted. And then with a powerful stroke of its wings, it took flight and ascended into the black night sky. As it vanished, we were left standing there, our minds reeling with a mix of awe and fear and curiosity. We knew that what we had witnessed was not just a figment of our imagination or an elaborate prank. It was real, and its presence carried a weight that we could not ignore. In the days that followed, we delved deep into research about the Mothman, eager to unravel the truth. We discovered that sightings of it had been reported throughout history often preceding tragic events or disasters, able to predict doom. As we dug deeper, we uncovered additional stories of the Mothman's appearances in Point Pleasant decades earlier. The townsfolk had witnessed the creature in the months leading up to the Silver Bridge collapse in 1967, a tragedy that claimed the lives of 46 people. We learned that the Mothman's presence seemed to be linked to other catastrophic events as well, raising questions about its nature and purpose. In the end, the encounter left us with an indelible mark, one that reminded us of the thin veil that separates the known from the unknown, and how easily our perception of reality can be shattered. Each one of us had our lives changed that night. Appalachian Trail, Virginia, 2017. So there I was, deep into the Appalachian Trail near the border of Virginia and West Virginia. I'd been hiking for about two weeks at this point and was planning on about another two, if all went well. Now I've been on a ton of hikes, but this one, this one was something else. It was about mid-May and the chill of the early spring was still lingering especially once the sun went down. 
but the scenery was breathtaking, honestly, with the mountains just beginning to shake off the winter blues. The trees were budding, and the air was thick with the earthy scent of spring. Anyway, I'd been hiking about five hours that day when I decided to set up camp near a small brook. There's something about the sound of running water that soothes me when I sleep. It's peaceful, tranquil, or at least it's supposed to be. I eventually got everything set up and was settling down for the night, the fire crackling nearby when I heard this rustling in the bushes. Now, it wasn't the sort of rustling you would dismiss as a rabbit or a squirrel. No, this was louder, heavier. It sent a shiver down my spine. I remember thinking that maybe somebody else was out there, or maybe even a deer was moving along in its own trail. Sometimes animals can sound larger than they are. I tried not to think about it, but the noise continued, and it continued in the exact same spot, just off the campsite. It wasn't getting fainter or moving along, so I grabbed my flashlight and I headed towards the noise. As I was getting closer, the rustling stopped, but I could feel something. It's hard to explain, but it was like I could feel eyes on me. This feeling of being watched was overwhelming, like I was on display. I shone my flashlight around, but there was nothing to see. Just trees and bushes in the blackness beyond my light. It was then, though, that I heard it. I might even go so far as to say I felt it versus heard it. A low growl. It was deep and guttural. I could feel it vibrate through the ground, shaking me to my core. In the pitch black, I felt a sense of dread like I was definitely in danger. My heart was racing and I was finding it hard to even breathe. My mind was yelling, get out of there. But my body, it wouldn't listen. But then something happened. This figure slowly emerged from the shadows. It wasn't just any figure. No, it was enormous, standing on two legs, silhouetted against the sparse moonlight. I felt my heart leap to my throat. I mean, we've all heard the stories, right? About Sasquatch or Bigfoot or whatever you want to call it. But to actually see one... Now you have to remember that the light wasn't the best. There was no real moon that night. But when my flashlight hit the thing, good lord, I could see that it was gigantic. I mean, it was tall, like really tall. I'd say easily eight or even nine feet. It towered above me, giving off this sense of pure, raw power that completely overwhelmed me. And it was broad too, very broad like its shoulders seemed as wide as a small car. No exaggeration. Its arms hung down almost to its knees, rippling with muscle under the hair that was matted and black, sort of blending with the shadows around. Its face, now that's something I will never forget. It was more human-like than ape-like, but still not quite human. Its eyes were large and expressive, shining in the light with an intelligence that startled me. The nose was flat, more like ours than a bear's or a wolf's. And its mouth, when it roared, I could see its teeth and even its breath as it exited its mouth in a slow stream of steam. Teeth were large, and they looked sharp, very sharp. It was a terrifying sight, the kind of thing you would expect to see in a nightmare not on a peaceful hike in the Appalachian woods. Like I said before, the sound it made was a deep, rumbling growl that seemed to shake the very ground beneath me. There was like a rawness to it, primal sort of power that you can't really put into words. And then suddenly it let out another roar, and it echoed through the forest, making the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. And then it disappeared from the light of my flashlight, I swung the light slowly back and forth, trying to pinpoint the thing's current location. But I couldn't see anything at all. Just like that, I was alone again, standing there in the pitch black, heart pounding. That's when I realized that sweat was pouring down from my face and my chest. 
I hadn't even been aware of what was happening to my body until just then. As I'm sure you can imagine, I didn't sleep a wink that night. Every noise, every shadow had me on edge. I couldn't wait for day to break. So just as soon as the sun started peeking over the mountains, I packed up my stuff and I headed onwards. There was no real place to go but continue at this point. But I will tell you that I cut the hike short. I didn't make those full final two weeks. I just couldn't get over what had happened. Now I will tell you that since that encounter, I have been back to the Appalachian Trail since. But never to that same spot. I can't say I'd ever want to see that section of the trail ever again. I'm going to share with you what happened to me in Savannah, Georgia in 2017. I was there because I'm an archaeologist. I love history, artifacts, all that kind of stuff. Now, Savannah is a funny place. It's old, it's beautiful, but it has a spooky side to it, especially if you know where to look. And I'm not talking about the city's famous haunted houses and cemeteries, but also the wild, untamed parts. Now, I've always had a knack for finding the strange and the unusual, even when I was a kid. It's part of why I got into archaeology. Anyway, one day we were working this dig and we came across this old, old foundation. Now the team was all excited because it's not something we expected to find where we were. So we're clearing away the dirt and the rocks, and that's when I find this really odd carved shell. Its carvings were not readily understandable to me. It was old and it had these strange markings on it, almost like hieroglyphics. And I'm not going to lie, it confused me a bit, but I was also very intrigued. So I decided to keep it, at least until I could figure out what it was. So fast forward to that night, I'm back at my place alone studying the shell and trying to make heads or tails of it. I was poring over old reference books and scanning the internet, doing whatever I could to uncover its secrets. As I'm sitting there, I start to notice something. It's gotten really quiet. I mean, quieter than it should have been. I glance over at the clock and it's just past midnight. And then I hear it, a low growl coming from outside the window. Now there are plenty of animals out in Savannah, but this did not sound like something you would normally hear. It was deep, almost like a large dog, but there was something off about it. Now I know what you're thinking. I've been spending too much time in the sun, but I swear to you, this happened. So there I was, right in the middle of the night, all alone with this weird growl echoing outside. And I have to tell you, my heart was racing. I mean, I'm not usually scared of wildlife, but something about that sound just was not right. I decided to peek outside to see what was making the noise. I opened the blinds slowly, not wanting to startle whatever was out there. And I'm telling you, what I saw... I will never forget. There, standing in the yard, was the biggest, most terrifying dog-like creature I had ever seen. This wasn't some stray dog or wolf. This thing was massive, like the size of a horse, and it had this thick, dark fur covering its body. Its eyes glowed eerie red in the darkness, and I could see its breath in the cool savanna night. I stood there looking, too scared to move, too scared to even think about what I was seeing. Was it a hallucination? Was I dreaming? At that point, I had no idea. All I knew was that I was staring at something that shouldn't exist. And then the creature did something unexpected. It tilted its head like it was curious. And then it leaned over, and I swear to you, it started scratching at the ground. And do you know what it revealed? Another shell. Same as the one I found at the dig site. And I don't know how, but I knew it wanted me to take it. I didn't want to go outside. Heck no. But something told me I had to. So as crazy as it sounds, I stepped out onto the porch. The creature didn't move, didn't growl. It just watched me. I moved slowly, my heart pounding in my chest. I went over and I reached down and picked up the shell. And as soon as my fingers closed around it, the creature let out this sort of a sigh, almost like it was relieved. 
and then it turned and went off into the night. And just like that, I was left standing there, holding two strange shells, wondering if I had just lost my mind. I figured the best thing I could do was investigate them. Maybe they held some sort of a clue. So I spent the next few days researching, and what I found was shocking. It turns out it seems these shells were tied to the local Native Americans who first lived in the area. Apparently, they were tokens of peace, made to honor a pact between the people and the spirit of the land. This spirit, it was said, often took the form of a massive dog, a protector of the natural world. And then it all clicked. The dig site, the shells, the giant dog-like creature. Somehow, I had stumbled upon this centuries-old secret. Maybe, just maybe, that spirit was real, and it chose me to carry on the legacy. The more I thought about it, the more it seemed like a calling. I had always been interested in the past, unearthing things from long ago. Maybe this was my story to tell. I pondered my next steps and whether or not to tell the rest of the team what I found. But in the end, I left it alone and I kept it all to myself. That's basically where my story ends, for now at least. Maybe someday I'll have more to tell, but until then, I'm just continuing with my job, trying to understand more mysteries of the past. So that's my strange encounter in Savannah. Makes you think, doesn't it? Who knows what secrets the past holds? Sedona, Arizona, 2019. Let me tell you about something crazy that happened to me. I was visiting Sedona in beautiful Arizona, famous for its red rock formations. And I'm a bit of a night owl. I love stargazing and all that. So there I am in the middle of nowhere, just outside of Sedona, and it's pitch black, perfect for star watching. So I'm sitting there in my truck, I have a flask of coffee, I'm staring up at the sky and the stars are popping, you know, like tiny fairy lights all across the black sky. And then, out of nowhere, things got weird. There's this streak of light that shoots across the sky. And I'm thinking, wow, a shooting star, you know, normal stargazing stuff. But this one, it didn't behave like any shooting star I've ever seen. It slowed down. That's right. It slowed down in the middle of the sky. And then it just hung there, like it was suspended or something. You would think at this point that I would be freaked out. But oddly, I wasn't. I was, I don't know, intrigued. I couldn't take my eyes off of it. It was hanging there, sort of pulsating. It's hard to describe. But then as I'm watching, it starts to change shape. I know, it sounds crazy, right? But I'm telling you that this light in the sky started shifting, morphing into a more structured shape. It looked like a craft of some kind, not like any plane or helicopter. And it was totally silent. There was this eerie calm around. You could hear a pin drop. So this light, this craft, it's just sitting there in the sky. And you have to understand that this wasn't some far off thing. It was close, close enough to make me wonder if I should turn my truck around and get out of there. But I didn't. I was just too drawn in. It was like the thing in the sky was calling me. I know it sounds bonkers, right? But there I am in the middle of nowhere staring at this thing like a moth to a flame. And then as if things weren't weird enough, the craft starts to descend. Slowly, eerily silently. I could see it more clearly now, and it was metallic, reflecting the moonlight, smooth and oval shaped, like nothing terrestrial. Suddenly, this beam of light comes from the craft, illuminating the ground right in front of me. I'm telling you, this was not your typical spotlight. It was more like a column of pure energy, and it was coming straight towards me. At this point, I should have been scared, right? Any sane person would have been. But no, not me. I felt calm, peaceful almost. It's hard to explain. It was like I knew, somehow, that this thing, whatever it was, 
meant no harm. So now this beam of light is getting closer, and then it just stops, about a few feet from me. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I mean, who would? I was half expecting to be lifted up into the sky like one of those sci-fi movies. But no, that didn't happen. Instead, something else did. Something that was, if possible, even stranger. The light beam started to shimmer like heat waves off of a hot road. And then it started to take form. A form that looked human-like. I know that sounds insane, but that's what happened. The beam of light turned into a humanoid form. There it was, right in front of me. A being made of light. It was so bright I had to squint, but the most amazing thing was that it didn't hurt my eyes. It was a soft, soothing light. There was something peaceful and serene about it. Now at this point, you'd think I'd be freaking out, but no, not even close. I was fascinated. It was like I was witnessing something incredible, beyond my understanding. And so now there's this light being standing in front of me, and I'm just staring with my mouth probably hanging open. But the being, it doesn't do anything aggressive. It just stands there, like it's observing me, just as much as I am it. And then it does something, something that to this day I can't quite wrap my head around. It lifts a hand, or what seems to be a hand, and points at me. Not in a threatening way, mind you, more like acknowledgement. And the next thing that happened, well, this is the part where people usually think I've gone off the deep end. But I swear to you, it's the truth. The being, it started to communicate with me. Now before you jump to conclusions, let me clarify, there were no words, no sound. But it was as if its thoughts, images, emotions were being directly transmitted into my mind. I know that sounds crazy too, but that's the only way I can describe it. There was this overwhelming sense of peace, understanding, and connection. I can't quite describe it. It felt like I was part of something bigger, something grand and beautiful. All right, so this communication, or whatever it was, lasted for only a few minutes. But it felt like hours. And it was like I was lost in a world of thoughts and feelings. It was incredibly intense, but not in a bad way. And then just as suddenly as it had started, it stopped. The being withdrew its hand, and the connection was severed. I was left standing there, feeling like I had just woken from a dream. The next thing I knew, the being was starting to dissolve. It was like it was becoming one with the beam of light again. Within a few seconds, the being was gone, and all that remained was the beam of light pointing towards the sky. And then the light retracted back into the craft. It was like watching a movie in reverse. The craft, now devoid of the beam of light, hung there in the sky for a few more moments, and then just shot off, disappeared into the night sky without a sound. And just like that, it was over. I was left standing there in the middle of nowhere with nothing but the stars. I got back into my truck, heart still pounding, mind racing with a million questions. I've never told many people this story, you know, because it sounds so unbelievable. But every time I look up at the stars, I can't help but remember that night, that encounter. I don't know what it was, why it happened, or if it will ever happen again. But I do know this, it changed me. It changed the way I see the world, the universe. And most of all, it changed the way I see myself. So picture this. My friend Tom and I were out in the middle of Wayne National Forest in Southeast Ohio when this happened. So here's the deal. I ended up there by pure chance. And let me tell you, It was a wild ride. You see, I'm not really one for remote places and all that nature stuff. But circumstances led me there. You know, sometimes life throws you a curveball and you just have to roll with it. Well, this was my curveball. It all started a few months ago when my friend Tom, who's into all these supernatural things, invited me to join him on a road trip. 
He had heard rumors about some strange happenings in Wayne National Forest. People going missing, eerie creature sightings, and whatnot. Now, I'm not one to believe in all that spooky mumbo-jumbo, but Tom's enthusiasm was contagious. Plus, I figured that it would be a good chance to get away from the daily grind for a bit. So off we went, driving through miles of winding roads and endless trees. I have to admit, this place felt different. The place was tucked away in the southeast corner of Ohio, surrounded by dense forests and hills. It had this eerie vibe to it, too, like something out of a horror movie. But I brushed it all off. After all, that's just a bunch of stories, right? So we arrived to the forest late in the afternoon. And let me tell you, there wasn't much to see at first. But you could sense the history, like the place had stories to tell. Tom and I checked into this little motel, the kind you would find in an old movie where the protagonist gets chased by a chainsaw-wielding maniac. Classic. So we spent the first day exploring the nearby town of Haydenville, chatting with the locals and trying to dig up any juicy information about the supposed supernatural occurrences. Most of the people were tight-lipped, looking at us like we were crazy. But we managed to find a few who were willing to spill the beans. They spoke to us of strange figures lurking in the woods, unsettling howls sounding at night, and even sightings of a creature they called Bigfoot. Yes, I know it sounds ridiculous, but we were there for an adventure, right? Nightfall came and we decided to head out into the woods armed with cameras, flashlights, and I was holding a whole lot of skepticism too. Being out there at night seemed crazy to me. Anyway, we followed a trail that led us deeper into the forest with nothing but the sound of our footsteps and the rustling leaves in the distance. The air grew colder and the woods grew darker as we ventured further in. It was like stepping into another world deep in the heart of the woods, where the air was thick and the shadows were dancing like they were alive. At least enough to scare the bejesus out of me. Tom and I continued, though, and we ventured further into the unknown. The forest grew denser as we pressed on, with towering trees blocking out the moonlight and creating this eerie atmosphere that sent chills down our spines. Tom, all the while, was hoping to find something, see something that would quench his thirst. To me, the silence was deafening, broken only by the faint sounds of us walking and the movements of the forest. And then, suddenly, we heard it, a low growl emanating from somewhere nearby. It was a guttural sound that seemed to vibrate through the very core of our beings. Our hearts skipped a beat as we exchanged nervous glances with each other. At least, I was nervous. I'm thinking Tom was probably excited. The reality of the situation, though, was sinking into us. We were not alone out there. And then the growling grew closer and louder, and we followed the sound guided by both curiosity and this sense of impending danger. As we crept through the undergrowth, our senses heightened and the smell of damp earth and decaying leaves filled our noses. And then, there it was, emerging from the darkness like a creature from a nightmare. The Bigfoot creature stood before us, a terrifying fusion of man and beast. Its eyes burned with an otherworldly intensity, piercing through the shadows with this unearthly glow. The creature's body was massive, towering above us on two powerful hind legs, while its arms extended into grotesque claws. The fur was dark and a matted mess blending seamlessly with the shadows all around it. The beast's snout was elongated with sharp, glistening teeth protruding from its jaws, and its ears twitched, homing in on every sound as if it were acutely aware of our presence. I tell you, it was a sight that froze the blood in our veins. The creature possessed an aura of primal ferocity, a force of nature that defied all reason and comprehension. We stood there, paralyzed by fear and fascination, 
unable to tear our eyes away from this beast. And then the tables turned between me and Tom. Tom managed to find his voice and said we should leave. His eyes never left the creature, but his suggestion fell on deaf ears with me because I was now captivated by this otherworldly creature. It was a curiosity or perhaps morbid fascination. I don't know, but something kept me glued to the spot. And then with an unexpected grace that did not match the monstrous form, the creature began to move. Each step it took was a reminder of the terrifying strength that lived within it. It moved closer to us, its hot breath fogging the cool night air. And though we were rooted in place by fear, something about the beast's demeanor began to shift. It wasn't just a terrifying creature suddenly. It also came across as a living being, maybe even more human than we had initially thought. But then it spoke. Its voice was a deep rumble that seemed to resonate from the very earth beneath our feet. It wasn't a language that we recognized exactly, more a series of growls and grunts. But the intent was clear. It wasn't threatening us. It was trying to communicate. Tom and I exchanged bewildered glances, not sure what to do. The eerie silence was eventually broken when Tom cautiously stepped toward the being, clearing his throat and attempting to mimic its sounds. His attempt was met with a long, scrutinizing stare from the beast. Its glowing eyes flickered, and the tense silence was broken when it actually responded. The growls and the grunts were seemingly more patient this time. Tom attempted to respond once more, a bit more confidently now. And then the exchange continued between them, and the tension between us all slowly dissipating. Gradually, an understanding developed. The creature was not there to harm us, but to warn us. But from what, we weren't sure. But we knew as we looked into its eyes that we needed to retreat, to get far away from that area as soon as possible. And once we understood that, we did not delay and we hightailed it out of there, back to the car. And that's where we sat and tried to comprehend what exactly happened during that most recent hour of our lives. Ultimately, that night would stay with us forever. And it would forever alter our perceptions of the world. And now, what we have confirmed are the hidden dwellers living right in our midst. Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, September 1979. I grew up in Martinsburg, West Virginia, which is really close to the border between West Virginia and Maryland. As a child, my dad took all of us kids, boy or girl, over to the wildlife preserve in Berkeley Springs to go hunting during hunting season. It was a 15-minute drive from our house, which was convenient, but the preserve itself was gigantic. And back then, it wasn't even close to as fenced off as it is today. Dad hunted for all sorts of creatures back in 79 when there weren't many regulations to follow. We could go after whatever we wanted, whenever, and it didn't really matter how old we were. Usually, my dad would get some deer and turkey, saving the meat for future meals. But on this trip, he was looking for bobcats to trade some fur in the area. As he always did, he got us up from our beds at about 5 a.m., handed us all some buttered toast and a glass of orange juice, and we were on our way, all five of us. Mom got to stay home with the new baby. The two kids under 13 didn't handle guns, so they stuck to Dad while he hunted. They just learned from him as we all did. We three teenagers had rifles, and we were sent on our way. We knew the area like the back of our hands. We just wandered off in different directions, all looking for bobcats. Dad said that he could get some good money for the furs, and since the holiday season was around the corner, we were itching to find as many as we could. I wandered south, away from everybody in the family. I was the middle child of the five on the trip, 
I was 13 and not the biggest hunting buff, but I still was willing to do whatever Dad told me. I was definitely the odd one out when it came to our very American heritage, but my family didn't bully me about it, and I could have said no if I didn't really want to go. I wanted to see if I could be like everybody else. I figured if I went in the opposite direction of everyone, the more bobcats there would be for me to hunt and grab. I passed a pond and a few other clearings, and then I would end up back in the thick of the woods. It was still early morning, now about seven, when I finally came upon what sounded like an animal stirring in the bushes on a small rock path above my head. I hid myself against the rock to give the animal a chance to walk its way down to my level. But after a few seconds, nothing. I was confused because I knew I heard something coming and there was only one direction it could have come from. I thought I should take a look to see if I could shoot it quick from the level where I was standing. As I peeled away from the wall, I looked up and came face to face with what appeared at first to be a dog. The eyes, though, and some of the features were almost human. The head was the size of two of mine. I was so stunned I couldn't even scream. I just dropped my rifle with the gun going off as it hit the ground. This really angered the beast because suddenly it began to sneer at me, and then it stood up on the edge of the rock to reveal how massive it actually was. At least seven or eight feet tall with claws that could rip me in half. The fur was black, like it hadn't bathed in months. Its eyes never left me as it began to make its way down the rock to the forest floor. Even its feet were massive, and I could hear its footsteps crashing into the ground. I was breathing so erratically at this point that I began to hyperventilate. This was no wolf, I thought. This was almost werewolf-like. But it was a sunny morning, and not the full moon. I could see the thing clear as day as it made its way around the rocks and towards me. But as it got within a few feet, I was unable to contain my fear any longer. I mean, I was only a kid at the time. And that's when I heard another bit of movement from the path that I came from, followed by a familiar voice, my oldest brother. Before my brother was able to approach and see us both standing there, the creature looked in his direction, turned, and took off, climbing back up the hill and out of sight. It happened so fast, but it felt like I had been standing there for years. I was shaking and still staring off at the trees in the distance as my brother came over to me. He had to snap me out of it by grabbing my shoulders and saying my name over and over. He had heard the gun go off and knew that one of us had to be there. He wanted to see if we had caught something. But when he looked at my face, which was stained with tears, I didn't even know I had cried. I couldn't speak. That's when he knew something else had happened. He then guided me back to the main area where the truck was parked and he stayed with me until everybody got back. When my dad saw me, he said it looked like I had seen a ghost. I told him, I did. I never went hunting with them again and no one ever mentioned seeing what I saw on any of their future trips. Luckily, dad just chalked it up to hunting not being something that I was meant to do. But really, that creature was so angry. I was afraid that if it ever saw anybody with a rifle again, it would eat them whole. That experience completely reshaped my life. I'm the only one of my siblings that left West Virginia. Now, I live in the city. I've got a story to tell you about a wild encounter I had while working as a park ranger in one of our beautiful national parks, Yosemite. Before we dive into the heart-pounding moment, let me give you a bit of background. As a seasoned ranger, I've spent years patrolling and exploring the vast wilderness of the park. It's my duty to ensure the safety of visitors and to protect the precious ecosystems that call this place home. On this particular autumn evening, I was deep in the heart of the park, where the dense forest seemed to stretch endlessly. The leaves had turned vibrant shades of red, orange, and gold, creating a breathtaking tapestry. The air was crisp, and the forest was alive. 
As I made my way through the winding trails, I couldn't help but feel a sense of tranquility. The beauty of nature never fails to amaze me. But little did I know that this peaceful evening was about to take a terrifying turn. Suddenly, I heard a low growl that sent chills down my spine. It was unlike anything in a decibel that didn't sound normal. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up. My heart skipped a beat. I carefully scanned my surroundings, trying to pinpoint the source. And that's when my eyes picked up on something lurking in the shadows, just a few feet away. I squinted, and I moved closer, trying to make out any details, only to be completely shocked by what I saw. It was like no other being that I had ever seen in the park. This creature's eyes glowed a piercing yellow, reflecting an eerie light in the darkness. Its fur was reddish, dirty, matted. The creature stood on two legs, towering over me with a muscular and imposing frame. We certainly did not have any indication of something like this being in the park during training. The snout was elongated, resembling that of a wolf, but its teeth were sharp and menacing, capable of inflicting serious harm for sure. Its arms were long and muscular with claws that protruded from its fingers. I couldn't believe my eyes. I was face to face with a creature straight out of hell. And now let me tell you my instincts as a ranger kicked in really quickly. I slowly reached for my radio, ready to call for backup. But just as I was about to make the call, the creature let out a blood-curdling sound that echoed through the trees. I couldn't move. My heart raced as I tried to make sense of the situation. Was this some kind of mythical beast? A legend come to life? Was I really even seeing this? I'd heard stories from fellow rangers about strange happenings in the park, but I never thought I would experience something like this firsthand. As I stood there, the creature took a step closer, with its large paws silently treading on the forest floor. Its long, sharp claws glinted in the moonlight, and I knew I had to act fast. I reached for my bear spray, knowing that it was my best chance of defending myself against this unknown entity. But just as I prepared to use the spray, the creature let out a mournful wail that sent shivers down my spine again. Its eyes seemed to plead with me, as if trying to communicate. In that moment, I saw something human in its gaze, an intelligence, and a longing that I really can't explain. My instincts told me to hold my ground, to give this mysterious creature a chance. I slowly lowered my bear spray, and I took a step backwards trying to convey that I meant no harm. The creature then tilted its head to the side, as if trying to understand my intentions, all while keeping its eyes firmly locked on mine. And then, in a flash, it turned and disappeared into the depths of the forest, leaving me standing there, bewildered and also amazed. I couldn't believe what just happened, a close encounter with a creature that defied all logic and explanation. I did immediately then radio in to report the incident. But deep down, I knew that this was a story that would be met with skepticism and disbelief. And yet for me, it was a reminder that there are still mysteries out there waiting to be unraveled. This story is about this one time I was in Gila National Forest in New Mexico in 1992. Gila is the oldest and largest designated wilderness in the United States. And it's quite the wild place, too, teeming with all sorts of interesting critters. And I'm not just talking about deer and bear. Now you're all probably wondering why was I there. Well, I used to be a forest ranger. I loved the great outdoors and the smell of pine in the morning. One night, I would say about two years ago, I was doing my regular rounds. It was a full moon, skies were clear, and you'd think nothing could go wrong. But boy, was I in for a surprise. I heard this rustling in the bushes. Now, me being me, I thought it was probably just a fox 
or maybe even a coyote. But then I saw this shadow, big, way bigger than any coyote, and it was slithering in a way that I could barely comprehend. Now I'm no coward, but this here, it was something else. And I was wanting to just hightail it out of there. But my curiosity, you know how that can be, well, it got the better of me. I decided to investigate, but all quiet-like, right? So I tiptoe over to where I saw that shadow. My heart's beating in my chest like a rabbit caught in a snare. I get closer, and then I see it. This thing is no regular forest animal, not by a long shot. It was massive, standing on two legs like a man, but it was no man that I have ever seen, covered in head to toe in these shimmering green scales, and the eyes were glowing like two embers in the dark. It gave me shivers, for sure. Its hands, or rather claws, they were something out of a nightmare. They were long and razor sharp, and that tail was long and serpentine, and the thing was twitching and coiling around like some kind of a snake. So I'm standing right there, right, frozen like a deer in the headlights, and this thing, it turns and looks right at me. I can see the moonlight glinting off of its scales, and for a moment, just for a moment, we lock eyes. Now, you all might not believe me, but in that moment, I swear it felt like this creature was reading me, like looking into my soul. And then it grunted, this deep, guttural sound that echoed through the trees. Now, I'm not too proud to say I was terrified, but still there was something fascinating about it, sort of like a car wreck that you can't look away from. So then I'm there looking at this monster straight in the eyes, and some part of me just wanted to run, to just turn and bolt. But I couldn't. I was stuck to the ground as if my boots had taken root. Suddenly the thing steps towards me, like real slow, each step sending a chill up my spine. But it didn't attack. It just stood there, sizing me up. And then out of nowhere it raises this claw thing, And now I thought this was it. I thought I was done for. But instead, it reaches out towards the moon, like it was trying to grab it right out of the sky. And I'm telling you, it was the most incredible thing I've ever seen, like something straight out of a movie. And then the next thing I know, it turns back to me, still with its claw raised high. And it makes this sound, not a growl, not a grunt, but a hiss, a long, eerie hiss that makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up, and then without warning it darts off into the darkness, leaving me alone with nothing but the echo of its hiss and the pounding of my heart. Now I don't know about you all, but that was the most terrifying and yet fascinating thing I've ever experienced. I haven't been the same since. I don't think I'll ever be. I stood there for what felt like an eternity with my heart pounding, adrenaline coursing through my veins. And then the forest, which was so familiar to me, suddenly felt alien, like I was a stranger in my own backyard. Finally, I managed to move my rooted feet, turning back towards the ranger station. I'm not sure why, but I didn't tell anybody about what happened that night. Maybe because I thought they would think I was crazy, or maybe just because I wanted to keep that to myself. I did go back to the spot the next day, and I found some strange tracks, Nothing like I had ever seen before. And then I took some pictures for keepsake, you know. That night changed everything for me. In fact, I'm not a forest ranger anymore. I moved into town and I got a job at the local hardware store. But every time I look out towards those woods, I can't help but wonder about that creature, that reptilian beast out there in the wild. It's become sort of a legend in my own mind. My own personal monster right here in Gila National Forest. So, there you have it. It's my story, as unbelievable as it may seem. Take from it what you will, but remember, next time you're out in the woods, keep your eyes open. You never know what you might encounter. 
Southern Mississippi, 2017. I'd like to start this off with a little bit of background about me. I'm 30 years old, my name is William, and I have this, what you would call, sadistic love of the outdoors, hiking, and going into hard climates and places that aren't exactly easy to traverse. I've never been one to go into a half-mile loop, something easily doable. I like to climb mountains, go into thick, boggy swamps, any terrain that's pretty rough. Because of this, you will usually find things other people will never see, which sets up my story. Which, by the way, I have information to back up my story from the past, from things that I've learned from native culture. So here we go. I believe there's a turf war going on. Oh, and one last thing, I also do believe in cryptids. I've had Bigfoot encounters as well as Dogman encounters in the past, but I'll save those for another time. Anyway, as I was saying, I do believe there's a territorial turf war between cryptids, specifically in the southern point of Mississippi. You see, just a couple of years ago, I was hiking deep in the marshlands, actually right along the Pascagoula River, which is in very southern Mississippi. It's pretty much in the middle of nowhere, and this is where I saw the most horrible thing that I ever have, even more frightening than my dogman and Bigfoot encounters. This was almost night. It was pretty dark, but you could still see somewhat enough that I could see that what was happening in front of me was insane. It started off with screams and loud sounds which prompted me to follow. Off in the brush, I heard what sounded like screaming, not human screams, like a giant wolf or something like that, screaming in pain. It's hard to say exactly. It sounded like something distorted, like animal sounds together. I could also hear some sort of a hissing noise, almost like a dinosaur roaring. Sounds crazy, I know. But then I peeked through and I saw a scene straight out of a Hollywood horror movie. This large, black, dog-looking thing with sharp pointed ears standing upright on two legs. It was massive, with bulging muscles, and it was being attacked by what I can only describe as half-human, half-Komodo dragon, I guess. The thing was very lizard-like. Whatever they were, they were about halfway in the water and fighting violently. And then in a split second, just by the sight alone, I knew that I was seeing a dog man and that it was fighting some sort of reptilian creature. And then this thing, this reptilian creature, reaches up in one quick motion and tears a part of the muscle off of its body, flesh included, leaving this gaping hole and blood was pouring out. The dogman creature screams in pain and lashes and bites down, tearing part of the shoulder open of the reptilian creature, even though it was covered in thick spikes and armor, or whatever it appeared to be. Or like armor like an alligator, not literal metal and steel. The thing screamed and hissed. It continued to be this bloody brawl. I watched in horror for maybe 20 more seconds. I have to realize it was probably only that short, but time seemed too slow as I was watching the horror in front of me. They brawled for a few more seconds, and then like a shark ascending up to bite into a seal, this thing jumped up and bit and tore out the throat of the dogman creature, causing the dogman to fall all the way back and fully submerge into the water, or this creature that looked far more like a dragon and an alligator and a human in one, but more like a Komodo dragon, grabbed its body and pulled it underneath. There was blood. I was so terrified watching this. I figured now was my only chance to escape. So I turned around, and as quietly and as quickly as possible, I ran back to where I had hiked from. If you want to verify my sighting yourself, I parked along Old River Road. It's still southern Mississippi, but a little bit north, and the Pascagoula River runs all through there. The brush is pretty thick, so good luck trying to traverse through it. After having three other separate dogman encounters, which I will send to you now that I think about it, I knew what a dogman was and what it looked like. I also knew how smart and how powerful they are, what they're capable of. By the way, both of these creatures, or cryptids as you call them, are incredibly large and very powerful. This dogman was no wimp, easily eight or nine feet tall, 
slender in the legs, but very muscular in the arms and the chest. In fact, it looked a lot like one of the other dogmen that I saw in Texas once. But that's another story. As far as the reptilian creature, it just flat out looked freaky. It looked wrong and kind of reminded me of something you would see if you were going to hell. Evil. Sinister. The way it had its spines on its back and the way it resembled a human, an alligator, and very prominently a Komodo dragon all in one. It was just frightening to look at. And it was also just a bit taller than the dogman. Probably not by several feet, though. But it seemed to be a little bit larger and was much more thicker and built like a tank. While this lizard thing appeared to take physical damage, too, it just seemed to have the upper hand and have more power than the dogman. But the dogman did put up a good fight. Once it had fully submerged into the water very quickly with the corpse of the dogman, I didn't stick around to see what was going to happen. I booked it out of there and was happily gone. In fact, the entire thing seemed so surreal, it doesn't even feel like it actually happened, to tell you the truth. Seeing something like that is like seeing a hyena and a lion fight in the wild. Yeah, it happens. There's documentation of it, but it's rare. And not too long after, you started releasing stuff on reptilian creatures that nobody else was talking about. Like alligator men living in the swamps of the South. Although nothing you released or talked about sounds exactly similar to what I saw, the lizard creature, you're kind of in the same ballpark with the alligator man thing. An apex lizard-like predator that's half human, half lizard, is definitely here in the swamps. This thing looked more like a horrible cryptid genetic experiment than anything else, which leads me to believe that there's probably cryptids all over the United States. Flying, reptilian, dog, possibly cat. Because I've heard of people talk about werebears and werecats. Although I have nothing to say about them, never seen them or heard stories about them personally, of course. But I wouldn't be surprised if there's cryptids of all variety. Naturally, it would make sense that they would have territory wars or come into squabbles here and there, which I can't believe I happen to come and see. But had I not heard the screaming and all the commotion, I wouldn't have even bothered to actually come and see what it was. I would have just stayed in the trees. However, there is some evidence to support what I saw does actually happen when people don't even realize it. For example, I heard a Bigfoot story a while back that somebody, forgive me because I don't remember the location, they were up in the mountains, possibly the Sierra Nevadas in California, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, they had witnessed from a distance two Bigfoots fighting to the death. One Bigfoot eventually overpowered the other, grabbed a large rock and bashed the other. There was also another one where another person had seen two dogmen fighting, where the more dominant one believed to be the alpha male tore out the throat of a similar one. So right then, we do know these things do exist. And not only exist, But these wars between them also happen. And then in native culture even, there's talk. I'm talking about the Plains Indians here. There are talks about their tribes going to war with the Dogman and the Bigfoot. And the Bigfoot and Dogman also warring against each other. Before I wrote this story out to send to you, I tried to educate myself as much as I could. Listening to many of your episodes, just to see if I could find the creature that I saw that maybe somebody out there would also describe it as I saw it, but no. So this also makes me theorize that maybe there are different varieties of these reptilian creatures. Maybe reptilians that are shapeshifters take the form of people, just as you've talked about in some of your episodes where people see people with reptilian eyes who I believe are disguised as humans. And then you have the more cryptid creature side of it, where you actually see tall reptilian creatures, half man, half dinosaur. I've heard descriptions of them, which might be the closest relation to what I saw. Although I prefer Komodo dragon because it looks more like that than, say, a dinosaur. And then other people, which is the most common, have talked about a half man, half alligator, which I already mentioned. So that seems to be the most common. 
Then, of course, you have these large reptilian creatures that look like lizards. There's also talks about tunnels and burrows being dug in the swamps. So if I'm totally honest with you, the more and more I listen, the more I've experienced, the swamps are just sounding like a less and less safe place to be, to visit, to hike around, to thrash around in and explore. I myself would not want to be caught off guard and attacked by either of these cryptids or reptilian things in the swamps. For all I know, it's their territory and it has been for a very long time. On the other side, there also seems to be a ton of encounters and sightings, and not even in just the New Orleans area, but everywhere around Mississippi too, the state that I'm currently residing in. And that's scary. But again, it would support the evidence that there's a clear territorial war. If you're not around in the deep parts of the marsh and the swamp, you're never even going to know what truly goes on. Just like when animals do get out in the middle of the wilderness you would never know. As frightening as this really is, it's apparent that we're dealing with two apex predators here, both far more intelligent, larger, faster, and more powerful than any of us. I really believe we're no longer in the top of the food chain. We've been clearly outmatched, and I feel it's time to learn our place. If these things are going to have territory wars, who knows how long it's going to go on? And ultimately, who knows how long it's been going on for. If the natives of the plains have talked about it, there might be a war between all of them that we don't even realize. I don't think this is anything we want to get into the middle of. Looking back on that moment when I saw those creatures, it felt like it lasted forever or that time had come to a slowdown. I regret not having my phone because I felt like I was in a moment where I could have captured it but I left most of my stuff back in the car. Considering during hiking and walking around, I like to get as deep into the thick of it as I can, away from the modern world as much as possible. The sounds were incredibly loud. The decibels and the volume were easily the sounds of elephants fighting. I mean, loud. It clearly got my attention. I didn't recognize the noises or at least the style in which the noises were happening. The hissing and the growling and the howling didn't make sense at first, so I was pretty much obligated to check it out. In the end, this experience sure has really made me reevaluate where I choose to explore, where I choose to go hiking, and when and where. I don't want to end up running into something else's territory, especially if it's a violent cryptid or territorial creature. You just can never know anymore, not after what I saw and not after my several violent experiences with these things. Peace be with you all. St. Cloud, Florida, October 2018. I'm going to tell you this crazy thing that happened to me at the Walmart Supercenter in St. Cloud, Florida. We're talking less than 10 miles to Kissimmee and about 20 from Disney, just to give you an idea of the area. Yeah, I know crazy things happen in Walmarts all the time, but listen to this. My name's Johnny, and I've been a trucker for about 15 years now. I've had various gigs riding all over the country, from coast to coast, from the hills to the woods, you name it. I've been there. I say all that to let you know that I'm not exactly green when it comes to bizarre experiences. But there I was that night, parked at the super center for an overnight. It was about 11 p.m. It was chilly that night and I was just about to hit the sack after munching on some leftover chicken wings from my lunch. Not the healthiest choice, I know. Now I'm sure you get it though, these stops aren't exactly five-star hotels. But after a while, you get used to it. You get used to the hum of the generators, the flickering neon lights, and even occasional weird noises. But this night? Oh boy, was this night different. I was in my cab just settling down when I heard this rustling noise from outside, near the back of the cab. At first I thought it was just the wind playing tricks or maybe some raccoon got into the trash cans. You know how they can be, always messing around and looking for a free meal. So I ignore it, and I try to get comfortable, trying to sleep. 
But then the noise gets louder, and I hear this, this low growl. I'm not talking about a dog growl or a raccoon hiss. I'm talking about a deep, rumbling growl that didn't sound like any animal I had ever heard. My gut tells me that something isn't right, and now I'm worried someone's messing with my truck. So my heart starts racing, and I decide to get out and check it out. I'm no chicken. This is my truck. They don't know who they're messing with with their life by bothering me. I grab my flashlight and I carefully step out of the cab. The cold night air hits me hard in the face, but I'm just focused on that noise. So I'm making my way around to the far back of the truck where the noise is now, flashlight in hand, when I hear the growl again. This time it's even louder, intense, and now it feels like it's right in front of me, and also all around me, all at the same time. I must admit, in that moment, my heart is pounding. I'm a seasoned trucker, sure, but I'm also human. I know fear when I feel it. And in that moment, I'm scared. But I'm also determined. I want to know what is causing the crazy sound. As I near the back of my truck, the rustling sounds stop. And now they're replaced by that low, constant growl. My flashlight's bouncing on the pavement because my hands are shaky. But I keep going. And then, I see it. Not a raccoon, not a stray dog. Something else. Something much bigger. Something I still struggle to believe. A creature hunched over near the edge of the truck with its back turned towards me. Its skin is scaly and glistening under the light from the overhead light and my flashlight. It's large, about the size of a grizzly. And its growls are echoing around the parking lot. I freeze. My brain is not fully processing what my eyes are seeing. This can't be real. I've heard of trucker tales about unexplained phenomenon, about cryptids and the like. But this, this is unlike anything I've ever heard. And then the thing turns, and it looks at me. Its eyes glowing a harsh, stark yellow in the beam of the flashlight. It's looking right at me. And the growls are now replaced by a sort of hissing noise. And I can see the teeth, sharp, deadly. So there I am, standing mere feet away from this creature. And it's still hunched over, and its skin, from what I can see, is rough. Scales are a deep green, blending with the shadows. And then there's this sort of chilling intelligence in its eyes. The head's longer, a bit like a crocodile, but not quite. And then the eyes, they're on the sides, providing it with wide field of view. And that's scary enough just to think about that. And then there are rows of sharp teeth protruding from its mouth that reminded me like a dinosaur. And the claws, they look like they could tear through steel. The tail, which I didn't notice at first, is long and whip-like, moving around, giving the impression of a coiled spring that's going to unleash. The overall appearance is terrifying, alien, something straight out of science fiction. But I don't run, I don't scream, instead I stand there. Part of me wants to get right back to the cab, but another part of me is entranced by this impossible sight. The trucker in me wants to document it, to have proof to show friends and family. I slowly reach for my phone, wanting to take a picture, but the creature almost as if it can read my mind, starts to move. Its motions are slow, but very deliberate, and I watch as it retreats into the darkness, away from all the light. And then within seconds, it's gone, leaving me standing there in the dead quiet, holding my phone and a flashlight that's not doing me any good. The rest of the night, as you can imagine, is sleepless for me. I stayed in my cab, but all locked up to the gills, every sound causing me to open my eyes and look around, thinking that the thing is going to return. But by dawn, I leave, and the eerie encounter is just too fresh in my mind. As I drive away, the super center fades in my rearview mirror, and I think about who I will tell first. But then the more I think about it, the crazier it sounds. And so in the end, the truth is, that I haven't told anybody up until now. 
So there you have it. I'm sure you've heard of crazy things happening at Walmart, but I bet you never expected to hear a story like this. All I can say is, never forget to watch your back. North Carolina, October 2021. I'm a 46-year-old truck driver born and raised in North Dakota. I've spent most of my life on the road transporting goods from one state to another. I've seen a lot of things on those dark, lonely roads, some explainable, some not so much. But there is one encounter that still sends shivers down my spine whenever I think about it. A couple of years ago, I picked up a gig hauling construction equipment to an isolated worksite near the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. It was late autumn and the days were getting shorter and the nights colder. It was on the third night of this trip and well past midnight that I came across something, well, not from around here. I was driving through a heavily wooded area, the road barely illuminated by the high beams of my rig, when I saw a figure ahead, standing right in the middle of the road. Luckily, I was going slow enough that I was able to slow down thinking that it might be a deer or something. But as I got closer, it was clear that this was no ordinary creature. The thing towered over the road, so much so that it was nearly a silhouette against the moonlit sky. Its height was staggering. It must have been nine or ten feet tall, and its body looked skeletal, like it was just skin clinging to bones. But at the same time, the skin did not look right. It was almost like it was decaying, rotting away in patches, revealing the horrible skeleton underneath. I couldn't figure out how this thing was even alive. It had the legs of an animal, long and bent, almost like a deer, but much larger, more robust. And then the face, it was a nightmare. It was like a skull, but also deer-like, but there was an unnatural quality to it. The eyes were just two glowing pits piercing the darkness with this terrifying yellowish-red light. And let's not forget the smell. God, the smell was unbearable. Like death, rotting meat left out in the sun for days kind of smell. It filled my nostrils and it made me gag even with me being in the rig and it out on the road. I watched as it just stood there. And then, as it finally started to move, I noticed that it seemed to limp, favoring one leg as if it had been hurt. And yet it still moved in a way that was unnaturally fluid for a creature of its size, slowly disappearing into the dense forest on the other side of the road. I shook myself out of my trance and I drove on, but my blood pressure and my heartbeat must have been through the roof, because I could hear my blood rushing in my ears. I didn't sleep that night. I couldn't get the image of the creature out of my head. The next morning, I told the construction crew about what I had seen. Most just laughed it off. But a few people's eyes got wider, and they looked worried. But they didn't say anything to let me know what they were actually thinking. My next couple of nights out, I stayed vigilant. I kept my eyes on the road, but I never saw the creature again. Since then, I've thought a lot about that night. Before the sighting, I had heard stories, of course, of strange creatures haunting the wilderness. But I had always dismissed them as just that, stories. But after that night, I can't help but wonder what else might be out there, lurking in the shadows. I mean, there can't just be one of these things. Anyway, it's changed how I look at the world made me realize that there's so much we don't understand, so much we don't know. Now I drive the highways and the back roads, always watching, always waiting for another glimpse of the unknown. Because once you have seen the inexplicable, you can't just go back to not believing. I was riding my bike down the road here in Ross County, Ohio, when I saw the strangest creature I have ever seen. I noticed it out of my peripheral vision, and it was strikingly huge. From the direction it was headed, it looked like it was about to walk off into the woods 
onto some of the old logging trails that had become popular with hikers. My first impression was that it looked like a dog, at least from what I could see from far away. Now, to give you an understanding of where this took place, I was on school break from Miami University in the town of Oxford, Ohio. And I was back home with my parents, who lived right outside the city limits of Chillicothe, Ohio. Their house was off Route 23, only about three miles away from where I saw this thing. You just kind of drive by this area if you're going north or south. There's no attraction or anything here except to see the thick woods and tons of trails for hiking. I immediately stopped my bike and I stayed back, just watching this thing wander in the direction away from me. When I saw it heading to the logging trail, it was only about 50 feet ahead of me and to the right, across a wooded area that sits adjacent to Route 23. And then it stretches for miles from there up towards Columbus. Let's just say that I was horrified to be watching this thing. And I sat there thinking about how close we were living to this creature that I never would have thought believed. It also made me remember that about five years prior or so, a friend of mine who lived nearby told me that he had heard of people seeing scary creatures on those trails. I also remembered when we were younger kids playing around at night back there, we actually found a skull that was bigger than a human's or any animal that I could have imagined. And that totally freaked us all out. So back to this creature, it looked kind of like a dog from behind. But when it suddenly stopped walking and turned its head towards me, I noticed it had pointy ears and a long tail that seemed weird for its shape. It had hunched shoulders and it moved sort of strangely for something so big. It must have heard me back there, though, because when I tried to get off my bike, I tripped and I caught myself, and it reacted by grunting and turning its head in my direction, but still keeping its pace. When it turned like that, I could have sworn that it looked right at me. I'm not sure if it actually saw me, though, and so I continued to put the bike down and to try to follow it quietly, but I also wanted to go fast enough to keep up with it. It seemed to travel as fast as if it was running, yet its legs were only moving at a walking pace. And then after a minute or so, it suddenly stopped, looked around, and then took off in a full run. It went so fast that I'm not sure if anything could have chased after it and caught it. It was gone in seconds, and even though I ran towards where it had been, there was no sign of it. I would say the whole encounter probably lasted no more than five minutes. I decided it would be best now if I just got myself out of there and headed home. So I turned around and ran back towards Route 23 to pick up my bike and head out of there. But within seconds, the creature re-emerged, and it was now standing right in front of me, this time only about 20 feet away. I tried to grab the attention of a car that was driving past, but they never even slowed down, let alone stop. And then when I looked back, It had circled around and was now blocking the path ahead of me. I saw its yellow eyes glowing in the moonlight, and then it turned towards me and let out this low growl which made my heart jump. Its mouth opened slightly to reveal pointy teeth, and it stood there with a crazy grimace on its face, staring at me, as if testing me if I'd try to approach it. Of course, I had no intention of doing that. It seemed like it didn't want to eat me, thank God, but he wanted something else from me. But what? And then when the thing made another move towards me, not thinking rationally at all, I started screaming and waving my arms wildly, thinking maybe I could scare it. That was a mistake. It then became instantly furious and it raised its head as if to go after me. Not like an attack dog, but more defensive. But before it could do anything, I ran as fast as I could towards 23. I looked back for just a few seconds to see that this creature had stopped moving and now stood frozen in place, staring at me. I hopped on my bike and I took off as fast as I could, as fast as my feet would pedal. By the time I reached my parents' house, which was really only about a football field of distance away, fear was now controlling every move, and I ran inside the house, and I locked myself in there. What did the thing want from me? Why didn't it attack me? Why did it want to scare me? I told my parents about it, and they looked at me like I was crazy. 
but they humored me by checking out the windows for me constantly in the days after that. They never saw anything at all. But believe it or not, the thing was back again tonight, two weeks after my first encounter. And you know where I saw it? Yes, I went back looking for it in the same area. Every day since, I had biked or walked past that area hoping to see it again, but nothing until today. While walking the dog about 8 o'clock at night, this time I saw it again. But when it caught sight of our dog, it took off in a full run, looking desperate to get away, instead of just walking quickly. It turns out, I think it was totally afraid of our dog. It never looked back once as it ran full speed out of that area and up into a cornfield. But that creature is still out there somewhere. And I don't think it's going to leave me alone until I talk to somebody about it and have them properly investigate. Every time I go outside now with my dog, or alone for that matter, I look over in the direction towards that field where my encounters happened. And I wonder if the creature is watching me from somewhere. And I'm always wondering, why did you show yourself to me? What do you want from me? And now it's almost a month since that second encounter and still nothing more. I keep wondering if it will ever show itself to me again, or to anybody else for that matter. I just want to know what it's all about. If anybody has experienced anything like what I'm describing, or if they have any information at all, please get in touch with me.